Oh, I triggered the, the, the powerful buff. Let's go. We make it happen. Nice. Here we go. Let's go! Hello everyone! I hope you're having a fantastic day! In this video, I'm going to show you the best and most effective build for the Euphoria Twinblade, an extraordinary secret weapon that can be obtained exploring the final zone of the DLC. Considering how hidden this weapon is, it's natural to assume that it is going to be stupidly broken. However, this is not the case, as this weapon is currently seen as a mediocre option for the majority of players, but I actually believe that it's more than decent if it's used with the right parameters. The Euphoria works with an internal buff system that increases the potential of the weapon with success excessive attacks. I will say that this twin blade is the most complex weapon you can find in Shadow of the Air Tree, but one of the coolest as well. First of all, I'm going to break down the main features of this weapon, I will explain the details of the build, then I'm going to test it against the most difficult enemies of the DLC and the base game, and I will show you how to obtain this weapon easily. So without anything further to say, let's make this weapon shine. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMO EXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Ok guys, what we have here today is a unique weapon that uses the regular Twin Blade moveset which makes it useful with successive attacks buffs. The Euphoria deals mostly holy damage, it scales mainly with fate and requires a minimal amount of strength and dexterity leading to a very low physical damage. Currently, the majority of players are a little bit disappointed of the general performance of the Euphoria, claiming that it deserves a buff. And even though I agree that it is not the most powerful weapon of this expansion, I actually find this weapon very useful in certain scenarios. This weapon might need a buff in order to make it easier to use for the most part of the community, but I can tell that with the exception of the final boss of the base game and the DLC, you can use this weapon perfectly fine and obtain decent results. Anyways, I understand why people like this blade and why they feel so unsatisfied about it. The unique skill of this weapon is called Euphoria Vortex, which is basically the same spinning attack the Godskin Apostle uses to attack the player, but with a cooler gold effect based on holy damage. It is very similar to the spinning weapon Ash of War, but it doesn't trigger the successive buffs and it has a very poor range. Too. So how the heck can we make a skill that sounds so mid a completely busted and overall useful skill? Well, the secret lies on the weapon itself. As I previously mentioned, this weapon has a unique buff system based on successive attacks. According to the multiple tests I made, you require at least 7 light attacks in a 10 seconds gap to trigger the first buff. This tier will slightly increase the holy damage of the weapon and it will buff the Euphoria Vortex with a laser beam increasing its reach significantly. And the second buff can be obtained by the same means but it's quite confusing. Sometimes I feel like I have to deal 14 light attacks in a 10 seconds window and sometimes it seems that after reaching the first buff you have another 10 seconds to deal 7 more light attacks. However, I prefer to perform charge heavy attacks. With only 4 successful and continuous charge heavy attacks you can take this weapon to its max performance. The problem here is that as this weapon works with successive attacks buffs, you will delete the majority of targets before reaching that stage no matter if you use the light or the heavy attacks. Nonetheless, you can build the buff faster hitting multiple targets or directly using 2 Euporias. Even though it sounds very hard to get the max level of this weapon, it is extremely useful against enemies with slow movements and a lot of HP. And if you think about it, with this weapon you can basically defeat your targets before getting your skill ready. So my personal advice is to build the first stage of the buff and use the skill immediately. This is a great balance between base moveset and skill playstyle. Playing this way I found the Euphoria as an incredible fun weapon regardless of being based on holy damage. Explained in fewer words, we can say that this weapon rewards an extremely aggressive and advanced playstyle. Those are the main features of this weapon, now let's jump straight into the equipment and the stats. We are going to be using the Euphoria on plus 10 and any skill we have available to cast our main buffs, but as we are going to be using a lot of faith to boost the power of the weapon, feel free to use any other seal and incantations you would like to use. I am going to be using the Leda's armors with the Oath Seeker set just for aesthetical reasons, so feel free to use any other armor set with better poise stat, cause you will need that stat to be able to deal as much hits as possible without being interrupted. The best talismans we can choose for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Windsor Insignia. However, I will replace the Ritual Sword Talisman with the Dragon Crest Grey Shield Talisman in order to be able to attack or to be as aggressive as possible without risking too much. And a very good alternative for this build is the Sacred Scorpion Charm, however it will take a little bit of more damage with this one. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Holy Shrouding Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear, but the Thorny Crack Tear is a great option as well. This weapon consumes a lot of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Torten Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. The most effective stats we can use for this build are 50 on B, 
Vigor, 26 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 33 on Strength and Dexterity, and 80 on Faith. Golden Vow and Hell of Shabridi are going to be our main buffs, but Flame Grant Me Strength is a great alternative if you don't want to take any extra damage. And as I previously established, we have a lot of Faith, so feel free to use any incantation you like to play. And I have my Scatter Tree Blessing on the level 19, and as you can see, my AR is absolutely insane. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we get a little bit euphoric? Let's make it work, guys. Nice. Amazing. <laughs> Dude. We are very lucky that somehow we find a way to make the weapons work, bro. I like that, to be honest. Oh my god, let's go. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen, baby. Let's make it happen. Oh, <laughs> we did it, bro! Nice, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> nice. Depths of your food. Here we go. Nice. Let's go. Let's beat him. Nice, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's go, guys. <laughs> Easy. <laughs>